so uh, wonderful so uh, i think i'm audible to everyone and uh, i will be you know very grateful uh, to all the panelists who have uh, you know taken out time from their busy schedule so uh, thanks for uh, joining in for the session we have all the kids from uh, ranging from grade 9 to 12 uh, from uh, different schools and especially nps uh, across bangalore and uh, uh, we are joined with uh, by three distinguished panelists today children and uh, i will be introducing uh, uh, them to you but before we start i really uh, hope and sincerely wish that everybody is uh, healthy and you are taking utmost precautions uh, about the situation which is at hand right now and uh, i am uh, hoping that none of you are venturing out uh, unnecessarily anyways you you must be aware now that coming 10th onwards we will be having some stringent uh, restrictions in the city so please adhere to the norms and whatever we discussed the other day that is day before yesterday by dr venkat and dr uma gave us a lot of insights about how to manage this uh, you know as a student so i hope you you would be following uh, those uh, uh, instructions with those words i let me welcome uh, our three distinguished panelists today and the theme as you know is architecture and uh, uh, other than food uh, i think architecture is the next thing uh, which is there since civilization was uh, you know started on this planet so hence uh, that is uh, something which is part of our lives and we can't run away or even you know in fact uh, as a as a matter of fact uh, when i was in iit kharagpur iit kharagpur has a very good architecture uh, uh, school and uh, there i used to think that okay uh, you know this is some alien kind of a world uh, when i ent- i used to enter there lots of design arcades and facades were there and i was like totally thrilled and something we used to think that how is this engineering um, in in any, any sense only to realize later on that uh, we were real unfortunate not to pay importance to such things and uh, and now i realize and i know that you know something which we have taken for granted let me tell you because we take every every you know everything which is very important for granted and later on only realize that oh this was architecture oh my god i had a very wrong notion about the field and that is uh, happening uh, to most of our children as well in fact uh, I'll, i'll i'll share my experience when i entered uh, uh, you know iit kharagpur there unfortunately those who could not get uh, the so called uh, distinguished uh, branches of the world they ended up being architect today and today i i personally envy them that my god why was my rank not like that and uh, you know i would have uh, taken that professional course and it is such a fascinating world so hence to talk about this course and to expose you about uh, this particular field which is part of civilization as i already told you and we can't ignore it we have three distinguished uh, guests today so i will introduce all of you, all of them to you one by one and uh, uh, ma'am whenever if i have some you know i i could not uh, elaborate on your uh, this thing so please uh, pardon me for that so uh, we have first dr uh, geeta viji and uh, uh, hello ma'am and welcome to the uh, session so uh, it's it's uh, it's really an honor to be uh, you know it's uh, architect uh, geeta viji <laughs> yes sorry sorry uh, so that's another uh, you know great mistake which we do so like what we uh, you know uh, uh, address our doctors community similarly we have to uh, you know uh, address uh, architect architects as well so hence we have architect uh, geeta viji she is an arch- yeah and uh, she is an architect with a creative eye and she is a designer she is an entrepreneur she also heads something called flora arcade consultancy and after uh, you know uh, working in multiple projects in her uh, career she is now uh, doing uh, full fledged uh, you know she is running one uh, 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 organization and uh, under her there are lots of uh, people who are getting trained and getting uh, you know uh, Uh, help in this particular sector so welcome ma'am and uh, uh, i will be uh, very you know our children will be really uh, fortunate to listen to you and your experiences and Hello to uh, all of you <laughs> okay so uh, just a minute uh, yeah i will also there are lots of audience which is coming in so i'm inviting them one by one so pardon me for that next uh, i have another very veteran uh, architect uh, architect aruna uh, shivsharan and uh, she, and she is from uvc one of the famous uh, universities uh, in india and karnataka and especially for architecture after having worked with various projects in corporate world she does freelancing consultancy as well so welcome ma'am and your experience and your uh, you know years of uh, learning yourself if you can just throw some light on some bit of that is absorbed by our set of students that will be a great uh, you know uh, this thing for our our students as well 
Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, we have uh, someone who teaches, and uh, that's why uh, that's where we connect. And uh, thanks to Liga, ma'am, to be uh, you know to be part of this. And uh, she is a faculty. She is a she is a professor. She teaches uh, with uh, Amiti School of Architecture and Planning and Interior Design. She has 18 years of experience and a broad range of skills, and ranging from in, you know and industry experience. And uh, she has been a winner of a winner of multiple awards. She has lots of publications in the field. And ma'am, welcome as a and as an academician, uh, you know I know you will be able to uh, guide our children to not only you know pursue this course uh, if they are interested and they find uh, their calling, and also let's say they end up doing high end research in the particular field because lots of our students in Bangalore, I can I can tell you they are very much keen on uh, 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 being a part of the research world, and hence your expertise, your experience definitely is going to work here. So. That's the introduction. I'm really sorry if I could not, uh, you know, add, uh, you know, or, or let's say if I have missed out on some point, you can take the, uh, you know, uh, the platform and uh, talk about uh, your uh, experiences. So let's begin. And uh, I will now invite Doc, uh, architect Gita to, uh, you know, talk about uh, the field as such architecture. And uh, I have very limited knowledge about, I only know my BR friends and Amak and the people who have done masters and uh, they uh, the only notion which I had so far that they are excellent in designing and you know the great aesthetic sense and uh, one very close friend of mine from Kharagpur is into you know uh, uh, in architecture and I see, keep seeing his uh, posts on um, uh, social media and other places and uh, I I keep saying that this kind of creativity is something God God's blessing so hence. Please uh, enlighten about, enlighten us about the field, ma'am. The notions which we have that it has to do only with the drawings. And I used to think uh, initially that how come this is part of an engineering institute, which later on I you know I got clarification. But then your experience and uh, you know knowledge will definitely add value here. So please enlighten us about the program or the course as such. So first of all, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Tushar, for having invited us here to speak. One of them. And um, to be very frank, you've said it all. <laughs> Without actually knowing, you said a lot many, and you know a lot too much, actually. <laughs> so I, I think we should actually meet your standards now. <laughs> so, uh, so, so saying that I should say art and technology makes architecture, okay? Yeah. Sort of, in a very, in a brief note. And it's more of an, uh, what it, it's an experience and it's an extension to our lifestyle of a particular period. In the sense, today we are living in the 20s, uh, 2021, so we do have some expression probably our grandparents. So I'm going to relate to more of school children. So I'm going to talk to them where I can address it. So uh, if you go a little past what your grandparents, how they lived, so that kind of uh, culture and all the socio-cultural and the lifestyle, it's an extension of that, okay? And second thing is wherever we go, it's an expression. Wherever you go in experience, right? You go to a resort, you say, wow, what a wonderful place. So that means you experience it. So that is what you see. You envision, you vision. There is something to do with the vision. It's all, all to do with the sensory organs where you enjoy, you feel, you touch everything that is expressed here in art and art and architecture. And it is culture based. And most so third thing, most importantly, it vibrates or it represents that particular region's climate, the culture, the climate, basically the regional climate that actually you know embodies what we portray in our architecture because Rajasthan and Bangalore are two different climates and our buildings relate differently. So that means to say every climate has a different setup and what we enjoy. So then brief, this is what I think Madam Aruna and Tulika can take it forward from here. Yeah, great. So now I think I, I, I would now uh, invite uh, architect Aruna ma'am to, you know, throw some light on uh, the, the subject matter. And also, uh, you know, if you can help us with one very vital question, which all the students typically face, now, how do you end up, uh, or let's say, how do you decide a particular field? And, and basically what I'm trying to understand from you in particular is, what was that uh, decision point or how did you arrive at this particular decision that you would be in or, you know, taking up architecture for your profession? So uh, that, that would definitely help our children to, you know, go for uh, whenever they feel they find themselves in that particular juncture, then that, that particular, uh, your experience is going to help, help them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good evening, children and Tushar. Thanks, and thanks a lot for inviting me. And thank you, architect Geeta, especially she <laughs> joined, uh, asked me to join for this evening. 
Yeah, as she said, it's a spatial experience. In totality, what we feel, we can't pinpoint, you know, we okay. were told it's an art and science Together. of building. Okay. It's both, you have to be good in mathematics, you have to be good in art. And those who are good in this, they will naturally get attracted to this. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with me as I was finishing my, uh, you know, the school, PUC and all. I was very much interested in traveling, art, pictures, I mean, photography, everything. And I thought this course would be ideal. Mm -hmm. And those who like these things and take this course, it will be a breeze. It won't be like you have mentioned, it's five years of, uh, you know, a, a lengthy period. But at the end of five years, we feel that we have just been introduced. Okay. You know, there is a lot of learning starts after this five years. Okay. So enjoy the five years. That's what I'm telling the kids. But you should be prepared that it should be your liking. It should be your passion. There are, uh, you know, few who quit at the first semester only. You know, and uh, there were some classmates of mine, okay. they found it very quickly that this is not chalk for them. So mm -hmm. that too happens. But now you have the opportunity to listen to us and you are better exposed than in 70s. When I joined, we had no inclination, but we had a great, I had a great liking for art and uh, uh, architecture. And uh, I had few seniors like my uncle and my elder brother, cousin brother, they were also architects, kind of, you know, I had a doctor's exposure and architect's exposure. And I felt this was it for me. Okay. And that's how I took it and no regrets. And it gives you a very broad, uh, you know, uh, sense of uh, uh, experience to enjoy the life and also be as a professional great and, so the, uh, okay sorry ma'am sorry if I, yeah, if yeah I, that's it yes. so 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 basically the takeaway is guys uh you know uh, this is one profession unique profession i must say which is mix of arts and sciences and uh, hence someone who is interested in both of them let's say someone has uh, outstanding creative and aesthetics uh, sense which i i particularly don't have and uh, and someone who is also good at mathematics is a very good combination in a you know, uh, a field where you can satisfy both your, uh, you know, let's say intellectual curiosity. So very good. Uh, uh, thanks for that explanation, ma'am. Now I would also like to hear from uh, architect Tulika, ma'am, to, you know, uh, understand what was her, uh, you know, factors which made her take this. Or typically, I'll tell you, uh, during our time, at least, you know, uh, when we were uh, uh, writing our J exams and all, uh, we were typically... Uh, you know, pushed by the ranking system of the examination. So we really did not have any idea. We did not even know that chemical engineering is not about chemistry. And uh, because of those uh, such myths, uh, actually, we uh, lost a lot of opportunities uh, in our life. So hence, uh, we also want our students to understand, uh, you know, uh, what all aspects are there before decision, taking a decision of all this, because as, as ma'am was telling us that, you know, some of her friends and colleagues actually started, but then realized that, okay, this is not their, uh, you know, forte. So what should we do as a groundwork as, as on, you know, as, as the, at the stage so that we do not reach that level and we enjoy uh, the subject matter uh, when we join the course. Tulika ma'am. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you to Shar and thank you Gita for inviting me here. Uh, it's a wonderful portal to be uh, addressing the students, or especially 9th and 10th, who have got aspirations for becoming an architect and becoming a... It is a field where you can really express yourself endlessly. It's a field full of life. It is a way of life, what I would suggest to you. And that is what I've experienced in my life from the if you have that knack of uh, asking questions what where how you have that some research bend in your mind okay uh, how this is done this is uh, this is a field for that for those people who for those students for those candidates who think that they can be creative as well as they can be innovative and get to new things after all, we are living in one kind of a scenario, one kind of an habitat. And why not we can change 
we we have to change change is inevitable so we have to go towards a different kind of a scenario different kind of buildings we have to have that kind of research bend of mind we have to have that kind of know how and it needn't be that you know we uh, you are the future you are our future of tomorrow you are our future so it doesn't mean that you don't have the skills probably with different with the skills which you which the college will give you any architecture college will give you you'll come up to that level that you can research you can do any kind of building design that's what i tell my students always and okay. my life has also been like that that from my early years uh, my house was getting built that's what the change over came in me and i wanted to do the same work i want to do to design i wanted to make the spaces make it more livable make it more functional make it more creative so that was my dream and my ideology okay great so Thank what you. i take away from ma'am's uh, uh, you know discussion is that you know this is a field again uh, like many others you will be uh, if you are really creative person and you your appetite is for you know uh, doing something creative day in day out if you want to get into a profession where you see a lot of creativity around you and I, as i told told you one of my very close friends is into architecture and when i see his creativity you know whether he is designing a workspace or he is designing a building for that matter or even for you know uh, 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 let's say he he displays his the interior design skills and all that i get to understand that functionality which ma'am is talking about and when we will talk uh, to uh, architect geeta ma'am also on the econo- you know ecosystem and environmental aspects of architecture later so you will see this field is full of opportunities and it's not that you know uh, everything is now known there are lots of innovative researches what i came to know is going on when i was also studying all these while before we conduct we are conducting this session that what all cutting edge uh, you know uh, building material or for that matter you know lighter material is used or the design aspects have to be such so lots of creativity and innovation is there in this profession itself so if you are of that nature where you are uh, having both bends of mind that is you are artistic as well as you are objective uh, in your approach then uh, this could be one of the fields to look for am i right uh, 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 architect geeta ma'am and you know so now the the next question uh, is is to you only that uh, you uh, you know you finished your uh, uh, architecture course and then uh, you you gained your professional uh, excellence and post that now you are an entrepreneur so you could have a well chosen uh, established firm where you know people are doing or you can be a part of a big mnc uh you know for example i think uh, companies like lnt or i'm just just throwing names i am not very sure who all are into it but you you can ba- basically throw more light on my question is how you know how did this come to you or what is the percentage maybe of the people who are also willing to you know strive into entrepreneurial route of architecture so that is very very difficult i i understand that, you know to establish your own uh, setup and then uh, get into this after uh, you know uh, you could have always chosen a very uh, what do you say settled so to say life and you ended up being an entrepreneur yourself so you can just throw some light on because today's generation is very keen on entrepreneurship let me tell you so everybody is talking about startups only these days so hence your experience of you know going into a professional course and then switching over into a role of entrepreneur may uh, give some uh, you know light to them so ma'am please yeah um again i would like to relate to the 9th and 10th standard and their how it uh, took off okay uh, the only thing is like this i used to be in the summer holidays and then you know what i would only look forward to in the morning start doing some sketches and all that and wait for my father to come and just give me a pat and say wow you have done a good job okay so that's when my father in the 9th and 10th probably he was the one who recognized that she is interested in art okay and uh, doing this you know kind of sketches and all that i could do something pottery whatever then it came in second pc was the first person to write in the form architecture for my daughter so you know your parents help you a lot in making this decision okay and second second what happens is again it's the inbuilt quality of a person you know you are the person who talk a lot and who wants to do something you know i would always imagine myself okay whenever i would like to think about myself i would say if i go i wanted to lead a team you know i would want to carry an executive bag and uh, people around me and listening to me i want to do this and i want to do that that kind of nature i had in me so i was more of a team lead 
with a team and i would work like that so that gives you a you know a killing a gut feeling that you are there and not you know on the other side on the other side where you can um, you know work under somebody you can actually lead a team so that gives you one uh, thing and the third thing is an expression because architecture if given a project given to me the same project given to madam tulika and the same project given to madam aruna we see it in three different ways okay and the expression is so varied it's it's so varied and it actually relates to what lifestyle we have gone through what we have experienced and all that so when we are expressing certain things and then i work with somebody else you know sometimes it matches sometimes it actually we work as a team sometimes it actually even reverses we can go opposite also we think differently so these things when i wanted to express more creatively and then i was very technical and engineering bent i wanted to see as i told you it is art and architecture art and technology and this is nothing to do with being just painting and coming out of it okay i wanted to see the translation between paper okay and the ground okay i wanted to see that happening i wanted to live the dream okay whatever i am doing on paper is it actually happening at site so when right. that connection i wanted to establish i was more fit into practice and yeah. i have enjoyed thoroughly all through my 20 years <laughs> yeah great thanks thanks that thanks for that uh, response ma'am and uh, so children and uh, students you now know that you know uh, uh, you know so this is one of the fields where actually you can accomplish both the uh, dreams so let's say be, being a professional as well as leading uh, you know uh, or, or let's say leading a firm or establishing your own setup so if you wish to do that and i know lots of my friends and my colleagues and seniors are into into this world and they are doing a wonderful job now a similar question i wanted to pose it to tulika ma'am because she is coming from an academic background so uh, she is she did her professional course and then now she is into teaching of this particular course to other students so hence how do you suggest ma'am and what do you see from our teachers perspective or a faculty members perspective that how you know children can also take advantage of being into academia for this particular profession yes, def yeah. uh, definitely uh, uh, we need teachers and we are always on the lookout for uh, if you think that uh, architect generally are uh, when you do a project you have a big clientele you are a team lead as said by geeta ma'am and then they are uh, when you are a team lead you make people understand your project at site you talk to people so you are in a way educating so i think the person who has done architecture can easily become a faculty can go towards academia if he or she wants to have that career and the career is boundless i will tell you i joined as a uh, ad hoc faculty and then now i am doing my phd and would be a professor uh, uh, and there is a there is a complete uh, hierarchy to uh, stepping up development in the academia plus there is sort of lot of research work which is going with the academic now the with the present situation the academic institutions are looking forward for entrepreneurs and startups and all those things the whole gamut of uh, projects which the young minds with creative minds can give us some ideas that uh, we can with our ability to analyze with our the faculty and the industry there is a complete cohesion now we are looking for industry and academia together okay. so you would not only doing only academic work I you see. would also be co collaborating okay. with the industry so okay. it is a very interesting field academics i okay. would feel that i would say that great and great to know and there is a huge yeah huge okay. potential in it i i see so that is another uh, you know very vital point what ma'am is highlighting here is uh, if you are into academia where you are into let's say teaching it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to restrict yourself to teaching so ma'am yes, uh, maybe yeah ma'am i, I think uh, it, you you want to suggest that there are lots of consultancies anyways as a part of academics uh, you would be doing and uh, hence uh, you can have a balancing of both both the worlds or you can get the advantages of both the worlds so even if you land up in uh, the academia of the particular profession you always can do uh, you know a uh, 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 a role where you have the advantage of the academia you can become a teacher professor and all and as simultaneously you can also participate in the you know what uh, 
let's say geeta ma'am is doing where she is translating her innovation ideas into realities so both worlds advantage you have now this brings us to a very important question because now we will try to open up the field itself mm. what exactly does an architect do so what all subjects do you study what all uh, subjects i must be good at so that i learn this the course well and what you know typical day of an architect how would you describe that so i would like to listen from all three of you one by one maybe uh, geeta ma'am can start followed by aruna ma'am you have to just uh, tell the students and in terms of you know what exactly does a day of a architect look like what all activities do you do okay um, see i am into project management okay, okay. so uh, it is a little um, what you say as little specialized technical aspects of it so that what happens is my half a day believe me goes into project management getting all the projects on board what are the activities happening on board and my whatsapp is like full of projects you know teams okay so we keep on interacting the second half once i get on to it post lunch i sit on my design and the next 6 hours goes on to my design interacting with my own office so i'll have to do design then translate it into working drawing and then actually i'll have a, across uh, you know clientele meetings so now it's online so it is nice it's very vibrant so we do that so a typical day starts with this and again the design then interaction with the client and the vendors and the whole lot of whole gamut of people who we interact to get the project through the next day mm -hmm. so we we can keep on doing this and this is how a typical day works and it is challenging and it is a lot of work but you should enjoy it as madam aruna said and if you are enjoying it then nothing like it yeah. i think aruna madam can take it forward yeah. Yeah. So uh, Aruna, ma'am, can enlighten us on, let's say, you know, uh, so uh, typically, let's say, if I want to choose and, you know, uh, to be an architect, so what all subjects will I be studying anyway? So what all aspects of architecture are there? And I must be taking care of these, these, uh, let's say, subject matter, or I must be good at aesthetics, design perspective. I'm not sure what all are there also. So you can just throw some light on that, ma'am. Yeah. Five years, you know, it's very well, syllabus is very well worked out. Okay. We have to study a little bit of history of architecture for okay. six semesters, all the uh, through the globe from all the old uh, history so, of architecture. So, sorry, sorry to cut you short, ma'am. Here, so our students have, you know, lots of students have this aversion towards history. So. <laughs> But this is interesting, you know. Our, no. You know, you will know how those people like Geeta mentioned yeah. in that time what they were building. You know, some uh, three Correct. fourths. Uh, centuries three four millennium back before christ okay egyptian architecture greek architecture it's I interesting see. it's unlike uh, the typical history what we ours oh, uh, that, you know at that is there and the building materials what we build the, our uh, uh, buildings with you know like uh, there are local materials if you build with the local materials it's more sustainable okay that is a punch word now you know the building has to be green and sustainable okay because this is the maximum carbon output uh, giving out activity in the world so okay. everybody needs like bylaws are being satisfied even there is a certification that building is sustainable I so see. building materials and building construction what are the techniques you are using to build the building i see Then we have structures you know mm -hmm. the real reinforcements what we are going to put and of course the acoustics mm -hmm. and the climatology we have to learn i see and uh, you know the uh, uh, sanitary plumbing okay. water supply and we begin with mathematics and language also in the first mm -hmm. semester okay. and later on we have professional practice as okay. one subject you okay. have to know how a profession has to be practiced so uh, after finishing i feel that student should work in one or two offices for one or two years and then spring out like geeta I like uh, you know start on your own you will okay. know because you have just come out you have been introduced so working in one or two uh, or one office for one year is a good uh, beginning Okay, great. So uh, the follow-up question will be that, ma'am. What I understood is you cannot uh, do away with mathematics. Point number one. So lots of people think that you know uh, if I am uh, so I can really just skip mathematics and or the mathematical thought process and uh, just correct me if I'm wrong. You know, basically uh, not that uh, much. Okay, not so that much. it is not that intensive in mathematics, but there yes. must there has to be some bit of uh, some element of mathematics into it. Yeah. 
some element, just okay. uh, you know, uh, common sense broader this okay. thing that, uh, okay. in designing of structures. But we have the structural engineers to fill up that. I but see. Okay. If you have studied all that, you'll that be able helps. to design better. Okay, okay, that's 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 really uh, you know uh, great uh, direction on that, uh, ma'am. And now I'd like to hear from uh, Tulika, ma'am, on the same uh, this thing. But uh, an additional question is: See, if I, I will talk as a novice. I also am you know totally uh, unknown uh, with this field. So my all my I had this misconception or whatever that you know you must be very good with your aesthetics and art artistry. If you are not very good in that, then you are a pathetic architect any which way. So don't even think of going in that direction. So is my understanding correct? Because lots of people have this notion today that uh, uh, boss, if you are not good with your artistics, uh, you know you are not good at painting and sketching and all that. So probably this field is not for you. Um, is my understanding correct, or uh, you'd like to correct it, ma'am? Please. Uh, actually, this field is for the people who can uh, have dreams. and translate to paper okay and uh, it the dreams can be anything it not be if they don't have the skill of sketching as okay. it is now mm -hmm. what is happening is is we are going towards digitization okay okay mm -hmm. so uh, we are also feeling in our academia mm -hmm. that this way we are drafting making students learn is not uh, probably we have to do some changes in it okay uh, because of digitization maximum uh, softwares are there mm -hmm. sketch pads are there mm -hmm. pro sketch pads are there mm -hmm. which the students can use mm -hmm. obviously the first year uh, the informative year first years would be more to stress on your sketching mm -hmm. to make your ideas firmer and to make you come up with newer ideas uh and make you build up like you have some positives in you maybe your sketching is weak so we work towards it so what is what is the strength strength you have so in the academy we work towards your strength okay okay we do not see ke uh, uh that's what amity amity university we are uh, doing a progression of students from the first year itself mm -hmm. and we are seeing that what a student is good towards maybe he has good analytical skills okay maybe okay. she has she is good with building construction okay so we build on those subjects and uh, make the student stronger to become an architect to pursue his dream or her goals okay okay great That's so another great. another subsequent question on to this ma'am because i was also going through all these and uh, whatever we were uh, was seeing around in iit kharagpur the department was called architecture and town planning or regional planning actually to be precise regional planning right. now what is this regional planning part of this game so architecture i can understand okay design of building and uh, let's say a society maybe a apartment complex or a office complex or a shopping complex but this regional planning when it comes what does that actually mean so hence maybe uh, that would be another area where people would be interested or town planning uh, or urban planning whichever way you urban planning regional planning is all about city planning okay where we plan our cities accordingly which like you have a whole gamut of uh, uh, infrastructure there okay you have your hospitals to be planned you have your restaurants to be planned okay you have your uh, 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 schools and universities to be planned mm -hmm. so how you plan those with your green area pockets and with the road infrastructure and with all the gamut of things is together the regional planning which we and, and it differs from region to region and i am very sure that uh, in a city like bangalore we are desperately looking for such planning people who can uh, help us you know uh, you know mitigate this congestion issues and all those so uh, uh, thanks for those little inputs add on yeah. yes please little add on yes ma'am uh, when it comes to planning see what happens you just think about your house it is a micro world okay mm -hmm. when you think about the city mm -hmm. it is a micro world mm -hmm. okay we are relating what is the city it is the macro world mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. you are relating to the macro world okay this many number of houses or this this is the population of that city these number of schools are there this much of uh, green is necessary these many hospitals are needed so these are the things and this these kind of road should be there so mm -hmm. that we plan at the macro level i see and this is the micro level so mm -hmm. the two worlds are interrelated mm -hmm. okay 
So uh, every the the water supply, the sanitary, the plumbing, everything relates from the macro to ma micro to macro, macro and back to micro. I see, so I see. this is managing of this. So it whole whole thing becomes a unit architecture and urban planning. It is but, all related. But but I'm honestly speaking, let's say in a country like India where cities are already pre-populated. and now you know we are talking about smart cities if you talk about sustainable millennium, millennium sustainable goals and all that so you know smart cities concept is going to be there in future so i think that could be a futuristic uh, uh, you know field where our students who are pursuing architecture and town planning are going to be absorbed into so they are the builders of smart cities of tomorrow so that is where the town planning thing will be more applic applicable yes see today you know what uh, we have bangalore as you said today it is the covid time you know yeah. so you can already see there are certain pockets which are very densely populated mm -hmm. like uh, the avenue road and mm -hmm. that area mm -hmm. then the city market area and all you know yes so density is quite high densely populated okay yes. and yes. then we have the uh, other uh, you know old areas and then we have the uh, outskirts and the green belt which is green belt is going further and further and further and further away mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and we have taken the lung spaces away mm -hmm. from the heart of the city mm -hmm. so these things are happening but in a smart city what happens is which bangalore was not planned for these many uh, school we didn't know the population is going to be so massive mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and now that we know mm -hmm. we can take a satellite town satellite mm -hmm. towns are those which are very close to the cities like tumkur is a satellite town of bangalore you know for example okay. Okay. so when we establish those centers you know okay. that becomes a smart city where I we can see. plan a little better in I terms see. of population the climate and everything studied together okay. so the sanitation the plumbing can also be you'll be suffering already in your own areas yes. this can be addressed pre plan so the children who are right now in school definitely i can see a great uh, you know prospect for all of you in this particular field 10 years down the line when you will be joining the workforce let's say and even early then uh, you know these things will be much in demand so hence you can seriously pursue these uh, professional courses in in future now ma'am talked about pandemic now this you know again raises my curiosity because do we have uh, now is the world thinking about you know managing pandemics uh, you know or what role the architecture has to play for example the other day we had a discussion on how obviously the medicine people are on the front line but do we also have uh, you know uh, uh, something to deal with such epidemics or pandemics uh, you know uh, in in the field of architecture would you enlighten us on that because now i think i have a very strong belief that our coming generation are going to be impacted by these things much and much more you know more yes, in, yes. so hence uh, uh, is there something so I'm, or i'm just drawing a unusual correlation between the two or is there something where the architects of the world today are also contributing to deal with such situations in in future Um, can i can i just uh, yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma yeah now uh, pritzker award is like nobel prize given in architecture field oh oh is it so that is okay. Okay. yeah and uh, this years you know in march two <laughs> french architects were given okay. you know for that what they were given their contribution was never to demolish any building now the sustainability is the key word Mm -hmm. you know uh, the most of buildings has caused this pandemic also you know down the line directly okay. maybe not but you know go slow in all the ways I see. and uh, you know that is the key so pandemic just hold on yeah and you know rethink your designs this is the time even you know those who are not been launched please do rethink keeping this pandemic and everything in your okay. mind in future see okay. uh, the most sustainable buildings only will be allowed to build okay i think uh, tulika will be teaching that in her uh, you know academics mm -hmm. yes, uh, the yes. most important thing now is this so in this pandemic time let them be aware of this when okay. all the activities have come to a kind of standstill i see that's what okay. i feel okay thanks thanks ma'am thanks for that Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, Geeta, ma'am was uh, saying, and you're, uh, yeah, saying something there. So I was just telling that uh, uh, I would like uh, Madam Tulika to take it uh, as to what they have done in their okay. academics now in this regard, yeah. and then I'll take it forward. Sure, sure, okay. sure, ma'am. Yeah. Tulika, ma'am. Yes, please. Like we have, the, the, we have a subject in architecture in the eighth semester on sustainable, okay, energy, energy efficient buildings. We energy have efficient. Two, yes. Okay. And there are few more subjects which we are looking forward to: eco-friendly okay. buildings. Although eco uh, 
all those uh, we teach in our institution and we also give a, a kind of seminars workshops all those are conducted with international uh, uh, international people uh, from the industry as well as academia I see. we contribute even we are trying for the students we try when we are looking at their skills when we are looking at the designs I we see. always pitch in and forward the idea of the sustainability and try to make the child or the student understand yeah. how would the future be for the next generation so, and so why i picked this thing was you know lots of our students are very uh, you know activist in 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 uh, climate change and all those so this is a very close topic a very you know close to heart topic for our children now so they are uh, very particular about that they don't want to uh, you know even if i ask them to print a worksheet and they will say no no it can it consumes papers yes, they are so, like yeah so we will not do that yeah. so hence i brought this topic and secondly uh, i have heard in bangalore for example there are some buildings for example i used to work with itc so they have itc gardenia which is supposedly a green building in itself so there's there's some award called lead award or something i i'm not yes, very yes. yeah so hence uh, now you can see in your city as well there are few uh, few uh, uh, buildings which are now very sensitive to their carbon footprint and all that so hence if you are interested in climate change and associated uh, 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 subjects and uh, let's say so hence being a architect who is you know working in the field of sustainable and green uh, you know uh, building uh, concepts you are going to be you know rocking the world so you are going to be the most sought after people i believe uh, later in 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 future so yes ma'am i will now hand over to geeta ma'am to you know uh, add add uh, her points on this ma'am uh, um mr tushar can i take it as a ppt now yeah, please, please 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 do that you can share okay. the screen so you can just uh, use okay, the okay i just share a screen in yeah. this regard so uh, okay see today i am talking about a biocentric designer okay so what uh, madam tulika and uh, madam uh, Aruna are having to say that today we are going to talk about quality living. It is not to do with what we have lived or what we have ended up being today. Okay, so what we are going to talk about quality living and what can do magic if we try to address the problems. As Tulika Madam said, the question starts from here. You know, why, what, how, when, and now more than ever, okay. and why we should do today. Okay, because if we are in a very very bad state. and probably this is because it is a man made world we only focused on what is good to us okay we thought this earth belongs to us mm -hmm. so we do anything we are you know we are, i mean a mismanage all our resources or we overuse it and then think of correcting it okay mm -hmm. and actually in the way, it gave lot of lot lots many uh, warnings but we didn't listen to it okay and because i want to cut this presentation a little uh, you know quickly so let me come to this So the next slide shows what is Bangalore. Oh. Okay, look at the lung spaces. Mm, okay, yes. So today you can see this is the lung space in the heart of the city, the UB city. Once UB city, then it came to this, okay. and now today we are here. Mm. Okay, mm. it's a concrete jungle. Okay, did we didn't we do it? So who's the trace which is the root cause and cancer is tumor a true tumor? Okay, aren't we the pandemic? And that's what I feel. We are the pandemic. We have caused all the trouble for ourselves. and the world around us mm, okay that's and what has led it led to this you know this whatever we did the carbon footprint what uh, what uh, madam aruna was talking about has led us to extreme meddling of bio habitat everybody's habitat we meddled with mm -hmm. let alone we building a habitat we meddled with others so it started with the global warming it gave us a warning the snow started melting then we had the scorched uh, sunflower crop we didn't take it then we had this carbon foot, uh, footprint emission from the industries we still didn't take it look at the delhi and bangalore today it is like the smog here okay and did we still take it no so when we went on doing this i think we asked for the trouble and then in the 2000s which only then we started seeing the tsunami then we saw the forest fire in australia then we saw this extreme drought and now even the pink snow or what you call the acid rain and all this coming up okay so i am relating to what has led us these are the problems what we did how many of children now i would like to be very interactive with the children here look yeah, at please. the children playing here yeah. yes. okay anybody can say yes and no to me okay just call off your video and say how many of you are missing this see look at parents with this you know hop skip and jump here 
Look at yes. the children actually hanging below. Like so this, look at the chil children can just uh, you know uh, reply in the chat box about your you know what ma'am is asking about. Yes, ma'am, please. Yeah, see how children look at the color, look at this tug of war. Can you be as close as this in the pandemic now? We are three feet away, probably six six feet away. How long have you taken to touch your butterfly in your yard? Okay, yes. so this has led us to an extreme situation where we are jailed and the others are outside. Okay, so and look at how many of children. I mean, I just really want to know. And you can be loud also. How many have uh, this ninth and tenth students? Okay, I don't think so. They have experienced a sparrow chirping in the garden. I think ours was the last generation who saw sparrows. You know, I've never heard because it died because so, or it went away. How many of you have seen? How died. many of you have seen sparrows in uh, in Bangalore? Anyone? Anyone has uh, seen? Uh, Anuj has seen it. Okay, lots of people have actually. They are saying okay. So uh, so. Uh, See, uh, the, the responses indicate, and we asking this question indicates that something which was so common in our lives, now it has become a you know, trivia question in a session like this. So you can imagine what kind of uh, intensity of damage ma'am is talking about, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, it is the radiation that has caused this, okay? And look at the children with the chips and the obese tummy because of the mobile they are holding on. And look at the damage it is causing to uh, the using the phones. I tell you, Mr. Tushar always keeps telling, don't use the mobile, use only your... Uh, you know, uh, PCs to attend your class. You know why? Because this is the reason. Okay. Nobody wants to be like this with that intense damage to your thinking. Your gray cells will become black very soon. So you cannot do that. So these are the things. So what led us here? Okay. Why? Because we started with the need. If you go to your forefathers, they lived in villages and it is an organic or they used to have a hut. They used to have whatever basics they had. They had a cow shed. They had all this, these animals. So it was an organic balance between agriculture and eating and drinking and finish it. That was their day. So they lived in their minimal wants. Then it started the yellow period, okay? We started, okay, need is not enough. We went on to want. We wanted more. We wanted more. So what the negative structure started? Inorganic growth. So what we said, we started moving and started establishing a little bigger town. Okay, and then from there we went off into cities. Then it, now, today we are in this red zone. And we are literally talking today online because of this red zone. So green to yellow to red. Now we'll have to go back to the orange. At least we cannot go back to the green. We have way, way past it. So we'll have to come to the orange. That is just to optimize. Use what is there. Don't overuse anything. At least for the sake of let go of whatever you have. Okay, and now coming to the solutions. Okay, what we do is the cure human race, we need to be both sensitive and sensible. Okay, focus on quality life and we need to be knowledgeable and well informed. It's not just being well informed, well informed by knowledge, supported by knowledge. Okay, and then we have biocentric global citizens we, be, uh, we need to become. Why? Because we need to have that global environment ecological balance. Okay. That is what we need to talk. And we need to attain an equilibrium between flora. Flora, everybody knows its flowers and all that plants and all that fauna, animals, their living habitat, and the human race. Optimize use of natural resources and then optimal ratios of all the elements. Okay. Then we'll have to minimize our way of, the, you know, we can't celebrate these days. How many of us can afford to celebrate just like that? Waste are all the expenses and all. Instead, go into communi uh, community kind of celebration and do away with that. Mix with people. Kill these geographical boundaries. Okay, it is no more India, Bangladesh, Nepal, China, America. We are one world. Think of the world because Earth is only one and we need to live in the same Earth. On the same Earth and use it effectively and just and leave it for others also to use. Okay, and then lifestyle should be very, very, you know, balanced. Okay. And then education and life education. Formal education is one thing what we get and learn the life education from your parents and your grandparents. Okay, how they lived. Well, they were happier than us, right? Okay, <laughs> so then whenever you ask your parents, okay, do you really need another mobile? Okay, then just ask yourself, do I really need it? Want it or can I do without it? Okay, and less dependent on gadgets. Okay, that's when your uh, thinking starts. Okay, and then limited and motor vehicles. If you can actually go by walk, please do it. And then electrically charged and avoid closed door activities. Instead, go play in the park. 
practicing self quarantine okay use public transport and you know i think we all drink a lot of tea and coffee then go to green tea and these you know why i'm telling is if your lifestyle does not change your expression does not change if your expression does not change the architecture will never change okay mm -hmm. so it is always renter related so now what uh, uh, thing you know our situation says stop halt think and then proceed as madam Maru aruna said think and proceed we are wrongly placed now why because we have led it here we have led this here okay we uh, the process was wrong so the product was naturally wrong okay next we are coming to what else when we do see now technology development so what we are going to do is earth does not belong to us it belongs to many so let's talk about the collaboration with you know geologists environmentalists architects doctors economists we all need to work together okay and then recognize red alert zones and establish fully you know, you know we'll have to have pandemic centers now you know disaster management centers okay we need to work on that and let me tell you little children today we have labor intensive work as is we are not able to manage so we are thinking of drone management drone yeah. management is a new technology which is entering into project management okay so using drone and it's very magical i am sure many children are playing minecraft i am sure <laughs> right how many of you are playing minecraft i think i'll got led, i'll get a lot of replies you know including my son okay so i am telling you and this drone management is going to really work very effectively and it will be very creative to you as well okay and then extensive and expansive green okay there's something called miyawaki style of garden you know that is uh, they are having trees and wherever you find a park try to have lot many green over there okay then we have design as sir said mr tushar said what is the difference between micro and macro climate i'm touching that point always design your house in such a way that it contributes to the city Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't build. You know, so so many people build so close to their neighbor. No, I'll also encroach. You also encroach. But <laughs> what happens? End of the day, both do not get the air they want to breathe at all. Yes. And what is needed to our skin is vitamin D, and vitamin D. When you don't allow sun to come in, nothing works. Okay. And always work in relevance to the demography. Demography is nothing but population of the city. Okay. And then conserve water. waste management as well as water management is necessary saving water and managing water are two different things and always customize designs for each and every person there okay and then finally i have just studied this uh, particular i was talking about uh, madam all uh, correctly pointed out uh, use of the right material in the right region see tropical hot and dry india enjoys tropical climate so hot and dry desert rajasthan tropical hot and humid kerala tropical cold and dry shrinagar cold and wet assam then tropical moderate it's bangalore as is a moderate uh, i think you know, i think ma'am this is a perfect bangalore. perfect slide uh, justifying studies of geography in class schools now typically yes. uh, you know our our children have a few of them i'm not generalizing it but few of them had have, have this notion that come 11th and all this is gone and they are happy guys <laughs> if you are planning to be in uh, you know uh, architecture and uh, you know all these fields see uh, it is coming back right so that's what i keep on emphasizing on that hey tropical hot and climate where do you study all of this it's in geography of 9th and 10th grade so hence and our architects are talking about it that means you know we can't really take any subject which is being taught in school just lightly and tomorrow you think that oh my god if i would have paid some more attention there probably i was in a better place better position so please uh, you know this message what i can draw from these slides are one that whatever we are learning it's going to merge together for sustainable development tomorrow whether you are an engineer whether you are an architect whether you are a doctor whether you are a you know lawyer or whatever so you are going to have laws around buildings you have to go, you have to be you know uh, you know a media person around the uh, architect you must have that multidisciplinary approach for anything we do so hence you cannot have a deaf ear towards something hey this is not of interest to me you can't, we can't really afford that any anymore so you know whatever is being discussed please uh, you know uh, draw a lot of inferences like this from this and you have to prepare yourself because ma'am was talking about water i am really concerned about the water availability in this city itself after let's say 10 years in one decade's time and maybe you know some of you are planning to you know shift your base to abroad or some other places but your parents your grandparents are going to be in this city here only right so they are going to you know they are not going to go with you trust me i have not been able to drive my parents out of their homes so trust me you are not you will also be not be able to drive your parents you know and bring along with you no not possible so hence when we are going to stay in this city then we must be concerned about 
all these small small things which ma'am is highlighting so thanks for bringing on uh, uh, these things ma'am sorry i i just uh, interrupted you in, in it's a very uh, valid input sir so i'm just also talking about sun path in the wind direction that decides your structure which orientation you need to have your building in northeast is the best light i'm telling okay. you after me madam aruna will take it up because she had her husband as a structural engineer and i had the opportunity to work on one of her projects and we worked as a team and it was a wonderful experience so it was nice to work with madam so she will take it forward from here after this okay yeah. and then having said that then i've actually just said in a moderate climate where like bangalore okay we are 3500 feet above sea level okay let me go not go into the details 4 to 7 you know if every other city in india enjoys 4 to 5 climates okay five, four climates in the, the whole uh, year we enjoy nearly about five climates in a day oh i think God. probably it is raining in some parts of bangalore today oh. okay suddenly it is raining in some area suddenly it is hot so then i have studied what should make 4 am to 7 am i have a climate 7 am to 8 am then i made a study of this so that means why i did the study is during what time i can have the ac off mm -hmm. the ac switched off Correct. i may not converse uh, conver i mean conserving that part that much of energy mm -hmm. okay so i can have that so when it's a moderate climate i have the right to play and i should contribute back to you know earth you mm -hmm. can't simply use just because you have power going you don't have to use it yeah. okay so next uh, coming to um, the slide okay then varying temperatures through the day causes changing se uh, seasons cause differential temperature quickly you know why we suddenly have a lot of cold in the evening and then you know what we start sneezing and all that so mm -hmm. that is very much born and then we have the carbon footprint very high in bangalore so both put together we lose our health okay so these are the things which are leading so our quality of life matters mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so this is what i inferred from the study of the climate of that region and this is how today i'm going to talk madam maruna was already telling about green buildings so i have done a particular this i'm going to take in context to bangalore okay i am going to show this hl ftc building because i didn't want to take somebody's project i thought let me uh, talk about this so uh, hl ftc is nothing but a flight test center building okay so this is the Which airport is, road i think this is in the airport road no huh? yes airport. sir very much if yeah. you have seen it is in uh, an airport road yeah. it is a green building and uh, holism germany actually recognize this particular building because you can see the orientation of the building it is oriented towards northeast Achha. okay mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. so that is one of the reasons uh, my building is like this okay and uh, you can see is this is a triple glaze and it's monitoring the runway there so the actual the building concept was this and a real building is this so there is no variation whatsoever this gives lot of impetus on what the climate can do to your building okay and i do not use a lot of uh, metal and glass wherever essential we do because here we have used because we need to see the runway mm -hmm. okay and then uh, in the smaller segment i have done a lot of courtyard houses this is this centerpiece is you know somebody came madam i just need an udupi styled house okay udupi is far from bangalore but it, it enjoys a different kind of a climate but then bringing that concept if you can see this you know glass bricks and all that You know, mm -hmm. do you know how you see Krishna in Udupi? It mm -hmm. is the aesthetics part of it. You see in small holes in Udupi right. if somebody has visited. So that concept we gave, but then we built a courtyard house here. Mm -hmm. Okay, can the top from this I allow rainwater to come into the house? Okay, into the courtyard and it gets flushed away. Okay, okay. so every year they have they uh, this person I had designed it only for ninety percent green building, and today he is my client is very happy. He says it is ninety eight percent. Oh. green building and the oh. uh, you know the what i got stamping for that was a kingfisher bird started living in their house oh wow <laughs> okay that was the most wonderful compliment amazing. i got when i did amazing. this amazing amazing and amazing. then you can see the led lights i've used here so they switch on only at 7:30 7 o'clock in the evening the lights the whole building is lit so they don't need to use any other light here apart from this this particular uh, cascade which i've shown this was done uh, for a kle school in which madam uh, did the building i wish i had the slides there this was already prepared so this is for madam aruna's building i did this she called me why don't you do the landscaping so then i said this is for a school if you can see i have used multiple colors so yep. the children can get to know colors it's for the nursery children right and okay. then i made them do the plants there so they can feel the plants and then water they can stand around here and the uh, you know the uh, some tank is somewhere else 
so they can play in water the mm -hmm. whole thing is i wanted the child to experience this Great. so we have done lot of landscape projects lot of green this is an apartment where emphasis is given on landscaping okay and then these are smaller houses and these are villas and even the smaller houses have a lot of green playing at every level okay and uh, and this is uh, another house in dollars colony which is just about 30 40 or 30 50 you can see the light amplified here this is natural light coming from the sky okay so uh, this you can see the north light tapped here can you see in the corner where i'm showing yep okay mm -hmm. that north light have tapped inside the building that is why this area and uh, till the ground floor it is lit in natural light. now i'm very sure people are not going to ask me what is total internal reflection and uh, you know <laughs> where do you use uh, you know uh, glass, you know all these optics which you are teaching now <laughs> so you you guys can relate to where it is being applied right so you know lots of artificial uh, you know so let's say if there is some obstruction and you want to bring some light into your dark room now you know where how to use your physics concept thanks for uh, helping ma'am <laughs> and uh, finally this is my last slide which is an auditorium which i did for about uh, 500 or 600 people uh, for vijaya bank on mg road and you can see the optical fiber lighting used okay. these are uh, led lights and this is uh, you know all these uh, all are led and optical fiber lighting okay and you can see the magic the theatrical effect so you can be globally you know reaching out or you can be as close as to your heart in your house but architecture to do is with quality of life Great. Okay, what you want to do? Breathe the air. Do a breathing building. Let the building breathe and the built environment around you. Thank Great. you so much. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks for such an enlightening. So you know, I, I the takeaways for me is you know next time I'm going to enter any new building, I'm going to you know observe all these you know minute uh, details. Maybe there is some learning hidden over there, and now uh, at least uh, my student friends can relate to. So whatever we are doing, whether it is geography or history. So Aruna, ma'am, talked about history. So history is important, whether it is. history right now whatever you are studying so one thing is you must know and whenever we talk about mathematical history or physics history it's because of this precise reason that you must know the context why we are doing all of this so that's one second uh, insight which i you know drew from mams this thing is see it, climate change and sustainable uh, lifestyle is going to be one of the most sort of the fields later on so whatever you do you have to think from that futuristic angle as well so whether it is biology whether it is even physics for that matter so architecture cannot happen without engineering input as well so hey even if you are taking up engineering so you have to have that thought process that hey tomorrow i have to you know be a part of uh, this workforce and hence i have my thought process should work in that line so thanks for you know showing it in the application ma'am and because once we see that being implemented somewhere all of a sudden everything we study and whatever we are going through in the schools start you know making a lot of sense so thanks thanks a little for that. question to madam aruna here yes. so she could actually throw a little light on the engineering side of it because she was i told you she was in the structural uh, thing you know so background. just to enlighten my friends structural engineering is nothing but a specialization of civil engineering so if you today again there is a class system in engineering let me tell you ma'am this is my our students must know this whenever je happen and i have lots of sleepless nights convincing my students to take up civil engineering it is not as glamorous as uh, let's say computer science but i keep on saying till civilization exists civil engineering will exist so hence you know how can you think about you know uh, 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 such an important uh, you know uh, a field to be or uh, some kind of a low cost or low class engineering so please don't have that kind of notions in your mind it's an amazing field and yes uh, aruna ma'am can just throw some light on the structural engineering aspect of it Yeah, wonderful presentation, Geeta. And uh, you know, plant you. plant building are so much complementary. You can't be without the plants. And for that, I you design for that particular site, and site will have some trees. See, we have the free hand to design around the tree instead of cutting a tree. One tree contributes the uh, you know oxygen equivalent to ten ACs. so you are cutting that and you are putting ac to your building so as you rightly said uh, um i do forget your name uh, the geeta ma'am oh uh, tushar <laughs> mr tushar I, I, it's okay it's okay no worries at all <laughs> okay yes, uh, yes, the future yes. lies in reuse reduce recycle even in architecture field I see. you know it has to be green building and uh, you know i was mentioning the nobel prize of architect they save all the old buildings you know the apartments which get old many of the countries demolish that and build 
but they do a face lifting and structural stability is given. That's why a great respect to structural engineers. We dream, but they will make it happen. Okay. You know, all these structural engineers keep saying, you do anything, we'll make it happen. You know, whether this is possible or not, they say, do any design, we will make it happen. See, okay. that important are the structural engineers. Yeah? So it's all, uh, um, you know, the mixture of all these things, landscaping, structural, and the climatology, everything is important. Great. So that's what great. I want to add here. Great, great. So now I think our students do realize this, you know, again, this is coming up last session also multidisciplinary approach towards studies work was coming up. Today also you see, you know, you can't be a specialist without knowing other subjects as well. So as ma'am is saying the architect must also understand climatology must also understand nuances of structural engineering maybe so hence all are, you know, intertwined together. So that's how the that's what the takeaway from this discussion is so far. Yeah. So proceeding further, ma'am, again, you know, I will talk from the perspective of the students, basically, for example, they are now in front of their computers and sitting all together for hours, you know, so seven, eight hours in while, while the school is going on, when we are taking classes and they have their own other, uh, you know, other engagements like uh, music and other things. Now, with that in context, do we have something related to ergonomics, maybe which I have heard of? Or, you know, how do we, you know, uh, what should be the planning under these circumstances that going forward anyways, now we are, we are getting to know that since the vaccination for young people is a uh, distant away, is quite, quite, quite away. So this is going to be a norm. So uh, the other day we talked about eye care. So has this particular field something to do with, let's say our management of uh, this new lifestyle? So would you be throwing some light on that, ma'am? Sulika, madam can take it forward from here. Yeah, maybe. Yes, uh, I personally feel that our spaces which we are de have designed have to be multi-purpose. Okay. Uh, we uh, cannot have a, like what we were having one in an interior space. Suppose one, this is a dining room, this living room. But for a study space, we have to have a multi-purpose kind of space so that we can arrange it likewise, which we can... Uh, uh, arrange it ergonomically to our set goals and conditions so that it can be used to the maximum functional perspective. Okay, okay. so I uh, my, my uh, so I will now you know uh, direct this question to Doc, you know architect Geeta, ma'am. That you know so some do's and don'ts of managing workplace, you know, facilitating work from home and for students, uh, you know, yes. for during online classes. So that is that is what uh, you know we will definitely look yes. forward to. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, important in terms of whenever you're sitting, now you're in closed doors, okay? Kindly, I would rather suggest that if you can sit near a window on your left-hand side, okay? okay. Because uh, the window will have a lot of reflection if it is on the back. So please have an open window so that it lets in some fresh air, okay? So don't just sit in a very closed capsule and keep working. And when if possibly in uh, when if uh, you're interactive and you can keep your videos off and still can do only listening to the class, keep pacing around, keep pacing around. Please don't sit and listen to the class. Just have something which can allow you to move around. Okay. And uh, before I know, uh, I do appreciate some kids, you know, when uh, just because they're from home, you know, they don't even, um, if you had to go to school, how you would go? Okay, you would go, you'll take your bath, you do all your things and wear a nice, you know, uniform and do, don't do away with that discipline. Okay, do all those courses, all those choices, you finish the day and then sit there, you will feel fresh. Okay, that I would suggest whether you wear a uniform or not, it does not matter, but then you at least are fresh in your body. Okay, and just keep that. And once this class session is done, keep away your gadgets for a while. Take to your outdoor, like do some skipping or something like that, physical exercise and come back. This is for the students. And second thing is their backs are aching extremely badly because they're sitting long hours. Have a back support, back support, which is needed. I think that the doctors previously in the session, they would have taught them a lot of, you know, a glare uh, glasses and all this. So I, I don't care. have to touch that, but no. that has to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't wear always these ear plugs. We'll do away with sometimes you we'll listen directly to the class. That's okay. what I think. Oh. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks for that. So uh, I, I appreciate that. And uh, students, please take care. So 
being close to a window and uh, you know uh, some ventilation is uh, really yes uh, aruna ma'am wants to add yes. one little point window also helps you to gauge outside gaze outside see something far seeing far is a rest for your eyes okay yes so, yes, yes the, the other day we discussed this one yes and the something far yeah that is so, a great rest for your eyes yeah so other day dr venkat suggested that you know uh, we have to do 20 20 20 Uh, rule so 20 right. minutes uh, you know after every 20 minutes you just uh, you know look off the screen then uh, tw- look at 20 meters distance and then blink your eyes 20 times that was what was suggested so thanks thanks for that input ma'am now coming back to again the profession per se so i would like to hear from uh, you know uh, architect tulika Tuli, ma'am that you know the, the normal understanding is you go to a so for for the information of children here i'll tell you if you want to pursue architecture in india there are around 400 plus colleges okay mm-hmm. now and uh, and how do you get to uh, those colleges now uh, uh, we'll talk about pan india level we'll also talk about let's say karnataka level so a uh, pan india level uh, you know uh, uh, those who are pursuing engineering they also have this option of writing the aptitude test for architecture which is conducted mm-hmm. both by je main that is there is a paper two mm-hmm. for that you have to sit for see that's the importance of architecture that you have to appear for a separate test for it so mm-hmm. je main offer you a uh, paper two where you have to uh, you know qualify that exam and if you so once you qualify je main uh, aptitude test then you are uh, you know eligible to get into all those colleges in a national institute of technology or other schools attached to it spa mm-hmm. for that matter school of planning and architecture in delhi and other mm-hmm. spa maybe there you can get entry if you want to get into iit so two of the iits offer architecture today so one is iit roorkee which is like age old university one of the uh, the, uh, the first engineering college in india and the other one is iit kharagpur which also has a you know very big uh, architectural department so these two iits offer architecture courses so you have to write a je advanced architecture aptitude test apart from you know writing je advanced so you have must cl- cl- you know clear je advanced once you clear je advanced then another aptitude test will be held for you and that aptitude test if you are able to pass and that aptitude what does this aptitude uh, test contain this has uh, you know your aesthetics uh, angle your mm-hmm. geometry your mathematics your you know uh, uh, multiple perspective design and you know th- those things will be asked so you know uh, this is one way so what did i talk about one is je main paper 2 for nits and other places and other institutions government funded technical institutions je advanced for iits and there is another very big exam called nata Not so yes. most of you would have national heard aptitude. of yes so national architecture uh, you know but uh, sorry national aptitude test in architecture, architecture so which takes care of you know all the other uh, famous or uh, you know institutions in the country so again there will be a 3 hour test and thankfully for you like je main now nata is also going to be twice a year so that's mm-hmm. an added advantage so let's say if you uh, do not you know do well in the first one you can always do well in the second one and uh, you know again mathematics and uh, the prerequisite is but tcm so those who are those who have not taken mathematics they will not be able to pursue architecture so that's a prerequisite my friend so when you decide your 11th 12th course your you know your your stream please keep in mind that if you wish to pursue architecture you have to have mathematics because all the exams the prerequisite is you must be having a qualifying paper in p c and m and then you'll have to also you know write a separate entrance test if you are able to qualify that aptitude test then you will be eligible to go for any of these uh, undergrad studies now my question to uh, architect uh, tulika ma'am is this that you know we are pretty much aware that okay after plus 2 there is a b arc five year b arc course mm-hmm. now what is the typical growth profile so let's say i do b arc what do i do next what are all options are there for me so will i do will i be joining a job or ma'am you can you can throw some light on that uh after your b arc you have lot of uh, you can join your uh, where you've done your uh, uh, internship you can join with them or you can have your own uh, setup now you can have your own startup you can mm-hmm. start like we are what we are pursuing that we are trying to pursue students with the startup so that they can continue that in that with the uh, with their uh, jobs also secondly you can also go for your specialization which mm-hmm. is your masters mm-hmm. 
uh, which may be in India. India also has a lot of specializations like urban planning, uh, like building engineering. There are different varied fields now, landscape, which you can go for according to your choice. I see. Uh, and uh, uh, and your liking, which you you should realize where your forty is after your B. A. Mm -hmm. uh, your student should realize that this is my liking and this is my forty and this is what I want to become. So okay. that you know, you have to do. Uh, I would suggest students to do lot of reading, I lot see. of uh, what buildings are happening, what are the architects doing abroad. Uh, outside globally and what are the Indian architects doing and how they can give the best to the industry. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. So basically, you know, so ma'am is, uh, you know, advising us to be in touch with some of the literature in the field, uh, if you really wish to pursue. So there is a master's course. So hence the next question uh, is directed to uh, Ar Aruna ma'am, uh, sorry, uh, Geeta ma'am here is that ma'am, uh, you know, uh, so what all, you know, uh, you know, streams are available? Uh, in the post grad level, maybe or maybe further uh, there, and uh, then uh, is there some kind of a hierarchy? I I am not. I'm asking this from an engineer's perspective because today in our country there is a you know hypothetical or you know some wrong kind of a hierarchy is floating around because it's all driven by the economy. But uh, hence uh, in the architecture field as well, do we have some kind of a specialization hierarchy that this is more sought after? So that our students are also aware that okay, this is the one field where lots of uh, you know advancement is happening, or you know I can pursue that so, particular uh, field. What I should say, Mr. Tushar. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Tushar. What I would say is, uh, this architecture can have a diverse way, uh, way of thinking. You know, because we can brand ourselves into anything. But then okay. today, it is very important when we are doing architecture yes, that project management skills, construction management skills, okay. you know, come into being. Because okay. many architects do have, do not have that knowledge. Because I tell you what, some people are lucky, like Madam Aruna, who had a husband who was a structural engineer. So they get, you know, that vibrations faster and they do the right kind of building, you know. Okay. But in some cases, we need to pursue engineering part of it so that we'll understand the building better and we can control it. But project management, how it happens is because we are like, you know, um, the, uh, we're highest in the pyramid in this, say, construction world. Then we have the vendors. Then we have the construction civil people. Then we have the AC consultants coming in. Then the, AC, you know, allied services, electrical, plumbing. So it's like this, you know, we are, you know, just, uh, you know, talking like this, like, um, you know, you would have seen the puppet show. One is talking, one is doing the work. So we'll have to pull all the reins and put them together and make it a building. So when we're doing this, we if we have the project management skills, okay, and uh, the construction management skills, and then if the architect is equipped in the quality, because today a house, see, supposing, say, let, let me tell uh, Mr. Tushar, he all he calls himself a layman who isn't, but okay, <laughs> but then he comes to us and says, build a house for him, okay, and he says, what's your budget? I ask him. Kind of, you know, he says, uh, I mean, I do know, but then I think, ma'am, I can invest about. Maybe um, say seventy to nine, uh, you know, one crore max, ma'am, or he might say even less than that. Okay, <laughs> then so, uh, 50, 60, 70. Then you know that uh, budget is there in his head, and then that means every pie that he's earned is worthy the quality that we need to give him. Okay, that is what an architect does because we are. Uh, the civil engineers uh, are here and we are specialized people. So we need to control the quality for him. Okay. That is, he has money to spend, but not to waste. Mm -hmm. Certainly not to waste. Okay. Ensure quality. And that quality checking comes only by project management and construction management skills. And as Madam Tulika was telling, the building construction, climatological study, and all this in your curriculum, whatever comes, and uh, the way I be, believe me, Mughal architecture, you know, we had all techniques. Go to Rajasthan, Ahmedabad, you know, you would say a lot of, uh, you know, there is Adalaj where the water was conserved and, you know, it was very cool. All these places, if you see, there is a meaning of for water management over there, you know. Okay. So, whatever is done, which is very related because in Ahmedabad, you don't get water as uh, it's very scarce. Okay, you cannot just uh, do away with water like mm -hmm. that. So, you know, everywhere it is concerned with the climate. So it is a very beautiful subject if you take it very seriously. And at sight, you need to be a very serious person getting every other client his worthy of investment. So what so I take should. away from this and discussion these are the, is... 
Yeah, sorry. So what I was saying is, I, I would that, like to tell you. Yeah, sir, please, please, can you? Sorry, no, sorry. I would like to touch upon because yeah. today it is labor, as I told you, labor intensive, and uh-huh. we're not able to manage without uh, inspection and all. Drone management is an in thing, so okay. you can actually be. It's a fun thing also for children now. Okay, mm-hmm. they can work with fun, and I know experts who are doing this, and they're uh, attaching themselves with the architects and all that. So do we manage the project for bigger uh, companies. So you know. Uh, okay. I can stay away from going to the site and still do, uh, you know, the deedful to people. So these are the areas we can actually work. Great. With. So the takeaway is, ma'am, a BR person can move into, let's say, a, a, a project management field and top up his uh, skill set there, and or let's say specialized fields like climatology or water management or even uh, I think town planning will be one of them and regional planning and things like that. So once you are done with your BR, just correct me if I'm wrong. You know, so these are the specialized areas where you can pick up one of these streams and then you know. you become masters of it and maybe then uh, you know you become professional in that particular field so thanks for uh, the, yes ma'am you want to add add something on that no yeah. i do not want to add i would like uh, madam aruna to add because she yes. had an opportunity to work with one uh, of the most uh, vibrant architects and uh, mr doshi okay. doshi so a okay. uh, little input as ma'am. to your experience and what you could uh, give sure, us sure ma'am please please yeah. please and uh, just to add uh, bb doshi won that pretzel award i have been telling okay. in 2018 <laughs> oh, he's wow. the only indian to have won that okay. and i had the good fortune of working with him and he is my spiritual guru i can say okay. in architecture okay. you know he's uh, uh, being in his office so that's what i'm saying working in an office for one year it's good just to see, he had few architects from japan working in his office so they represented that country mm-hmm. when you go out and uh, work in usa or if you are thinking of working anywhere out mm-hmm. you should know your indian architecture very well so you have to know your vernacular architecture very well mm-hmm. and when you go there you represent your country also mm-hmm. and it is the essence of uh, like geeta ma'am was saying you know the courtyard is the essence of indian uh, uh, you know small towns or even that can be used in our modern buildings I so see. all that is mixed when you are working with other architects and we are working in other offices they okay. inspire you and you inspire them okay. if you know your architecture well so what i'm taking away from your uh, point ma'am is that you know you can go for complete your br and you know maybe work for a year or two in some in some firm learn and interact with uh, multiple other architects learn new 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 concepts there and get a you know get inspired by someone who's already into the field and then also you can decide on you know your stream of specialization and move further up so there's uh, an intern here sir okay who's working with me so i just brought her in so yes. that she is actually in stu- she's a student still you okay. can take her uh, Explain. Why not? Why not? And, please, uh, please, please, madam, please. Madam uh, Trishna, Purnima, and uh, there is one uh, Manjunath here. Yeah, uh, I yeah. I think Trishna is here, and Manjunath is here. I can talk. You can get the feel of what this. Yes, 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 yes. So hi, hi, here. welcome, Trishna, and uh, thanks for coming in and you know uh, joining. You are you are on mute right now, so you have to unmute yourself. Ah, uh, hello, sir. Hello, hello. Very well. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Geeta, ma'am, for giving me an opportunity. Uh, so. yeah right now as you are saying like uh, yeah we are also aware of many fields after going uh, from here uh, but after working i mean after doing internship with geeta ma'am and uh, the way she guided us yeah uh, it um, actually have, uh, i mean it gives us uh, a pretty much clear cut knowledge that where we can do so even i feel that it is better to work in a firm for one to two years than decide in the field which you have to because there are plenty there is a plenty of scope in architecture you can go either in interior designing landscape urban designing and if you go for foreign countries you have plenty of um, other as uh, other uh, you know the fields such as aerospace designing and furniture now furniture designing has is on the boom okay. because everyone want like different kind of furnitures and there uh, there's lot of scope in architecture right now great great thanks thanks for your input trishna so what we can do now ma'am i think you know because anyways we are nearing our you know uh, finishing line so what i would mm-hmm. encourage so all the interns please you know you please participate and you know you might be able to you know give uh, first hand answers to the queries which our students would be having so i'd encourage all of you to you know participate in the q and a session so students now if you have any question i i was seeing some of the students posting some queries here 
So if you have any particular, uh, you know, query regarding the field, please feel free to ask. There we have three veterans here. We have lots of interns who are into the field already. And if you are choosing this field uh, in a couple of years time, then you will be doing the same internship what these people are doing. So they will they will give you the first hand information over here. So you please, I encourage everyone to you know uh, start asking questions. Yes, anyone? Uh, sir, I have a question. Yeah, please introduce yourself first and then ask. Um, my name is Tajimran. I have a question. Um, so there are impossible structures that architects conceive up. Why do they, so like, for example, you have the Penrose stairs, which are never ending stairs. Okay. Why do architects conceive of such things and how do they do so? So uh, I'm not very clear on the question. Uh, I think you had uh, uh, Parimal, Parimal, right? Who, who's speaking? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Pradyuman. Sorry, ha, Pradyuman. So you are talking about some pento stair or something, right? Pento stair. Okay. Okay. So, uh, any ma'am, uh, I have no clue of this particular thing. So maybe you can uh, add some. Yeah. So what what exactly is the question, uh, Pradyuman? Can you repeat that? So uh, I could hear only pento stair, something like that. Or you can type it out so that we can, you know, we can. I type. Uh, I typed it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, any other person you know wants to ask any question related to architecture field? Please go ahead. Please. Hi, go. sir. Yeah, who's Hi, who's sir. Good morning. My name is Rohit. Okay, Rohit. Yes, go ahead. Sir, uh, in uh, the what are the what will they teach in that course, sir? Five years course of architecture. What will they teach, sir? What will they teach? Uh, okay, so what are the subjects you are basically uh, you know asking, ma'am? Uh, Tulika, ma'am, would you like to yes, throw sir. some light on the subjects which are being taught? Yes, you are. Uh, as we have already uh, discussed, but we have told you that you have history of architecture, you have uh, technical drawing, you have graphics, you have um, uh, uh, design, architectural design, uh, you have building construction. So these five, six courses will go parallel at different levels in all the semesters. See, uh, I, I can just add and a little bit. The, yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 Please, please go ahead. Yeah. And in the later semesters, these are these subjects are enriched with electives, okay. which are like uh, energy efficiency or maybe uh, uh, estimation and costing okay. uh, specifications. And all those subjects are also added time that time, third sem uh, fourth semester, fifth semester, like that. I, and if you are in IIT, let's say I'll, I'll give you some brief from there. So let's say in archi archi architecture department in IIT, what do they do is they also take electives from civil and mechanical engineering department. So they will study thermodynamics. They will study structural engineering. engineering they, will, yeah. they will also study transportation and things like that. So, you know, the, uh, so it's a multidisciplinary again. So in architecture, you have to again go for your, uh, maybe there will be a subject on graphics as ma'am is saying, you know, computer graphics will be there. There is something called computer aided design will be there. So, uh, you know, there will be, uh, uh, there is a course called, um, you know, uh, um, uh, product realization, things related to that and all. So multiple, you know, and there is a gamut of elect electives you can take so that you can, you know, Im improve upon your, your understanding and in a grip in the subject. So this is typically the, uh, and yes, in the first year, mathematics is common. So you have to anyway study mathematics also in the first year. Yeah. Uh, so I would like to touch upon the previous question of the Penrose stairs, which, uh, Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, I think somebody spoke to. Uh, yes, pra Pradyuman, ma'am. He is in uh, ninth grade in NPSHSR. Yes. Yeah. See, uh, let me tell you. Um, I would rather suggest Mr. Pradyuman. He's asked a very big question. Penrose stays. <laughs> Not many would have heard of it. See, yeah. it's the 90 degree tunnel. It goes on and on and on. Okay? Yes. These are experiments which many architects do. Okay. What more can we do? And what um, excellently we can do? Or what different can we do? And all that. Okay. But I tell you what, any aspect of design, whatever you do, Okay, it's if a, a functional aspect is attached to it, mm -hmm. okay, then it makes sense. Uh, to me personally, to me, I do not exercise my um, uh, buildings or something which does not cater to the function only for the aesthetics or the sake of experimenting on it. I wouldn't do, but I never say Penrose stays as, as wrong, but it should find utility in our buildings. Then it makes sense. Okay, so yes, so basically the you know the utility aspect of architecture is also to be taken care of. I think uh, that answers your query. So there is another question. I'm not able. Just a minute, guys. I'm not able to uh, read your query. Yes. So I have some questions here in the. Um, yeah. So then yes. So uh, uh, the next question which I can see, ma'am, is which are good 
coaching classes for nata in bangalore so if i i'll show you one slide and if you go to nata's uh, uh website the first page in the brochure says no coaching center in the world can teach you the aesthetic <laughs> sense <laughs> and i was also astonished uh, to to see that that you know uh, uh, that that was the statement in the brochure itself is very categorically says that if you are planning to go for a coaching to learn those thought processes which inspire you to become a so it's as good as saying uh, can i become a you know big good artist by i don't know maybe that could be true by to certain extent but i was surprised myself when i was doing my own research that the first page itself boldly it says that don't fall for any coaching and all if you have it in you it is an innate trait what they say now if it is it is there in you then you will be able to do so you will always be having that uh, you know predisposition so you have to just explore that yes a little bit of you know preparedness in terms of what kind of questions they ask and hence you can orient yourself the only coaching you need maybe is for the subjects like physics and chemistry and mathematics to clear je advance and things like that and then once you are there then probably you know uh, your flair which you already have and some bit of orientation regarding you know the uh, the type of kind of questions they ask the perspectives and all those things can aid and you can clear that uh, exam so i think uh, you know uh, that that will be and i i would suggest if there are if, uh, i have heard of there are few institutions which are doing not i can't vouch for them i can't i don't know the quality they deliver so hence uh, you know you can you can uh, again go do a research and offline you can ask me i can tell you few names where you can you know do more further research on that so that's taken and then um, the question is uh, uh, is it possible for an engineer student to take up architecture at a later stage man that's a very interesting question so let's say uh, that is being asked by uh, tejaswini so good question tejaswini so is it possible man i am i am am tech uh, i am btech m tech from iit can i can i take up architecture i don't think so after my engineering i will be able to do so i have to repeat my process my dear friend so i might as for my understanding i might do a uh, a specialization and uh, in in maybe something related to for example climatology or water management and mm -hmm. things like that i can still do but i don't think i will be able to do full fledged architecture okay. and now to architecture people have their own council and there are lots of uh, you know so you have to register yourself to become an architect and i was astonished to know this is not true for engineers at least as far as i know but if you call yourself architecture without being an architect it's a punishable offense now mm -hmm. i was really surprised to so see that mm -hmm. that uh, so none of the you know uh, uh, maybe other other professions also you know have the similar mm -hmm. listing but uh, I, as an engineer i know you know you can call yourself engineer you know <laughs> no one cares because without so the without the registration of the council of architecture you cannot yes. establish your so ju just like you have to be a registered practitioner for medical science a doctor similarly you have to register yourself for to the council of architecture to be able to practice architecture also mm. so hence in my opinion once you are cross that uh, age group or you know first of all your age will be a you know factor which which will kind of you know, because you would like to pursue something in your own stream rather than changing it altogether so hence yes you will not be an architect but you can do the peripheral subjects i believe where you know you can do some water management courses or project management courses or if you're an engineer you just discuss that you know architecture is also very intricately what do you say intertwined with engineering so you can't separate these two so as a engineer itself you can you know contribute uh, to the field of architecture so i think uh, ma'am any one of you ma'am you want to add anything to it please please feel uh, maybe you can pursue interior design courses uh, which would give you a kind of a space planning or uh, which you're looking for Okay. you can still pursue on those uh, those kind of courses or maybe elective courses which will help you uh, further up your 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 goal for being an architect right so you know so yes ma uh, aruna ma'am please another uh, field is project management you can okay. sharpen yourself yes, for project management project also. management okay. and also green architecture okay. yeah. point which will uh, be sustainable building a sustainable uh, architecture great great so fine That's... tune in these subjects great so uh, we'll take another 2 uh, 3 minutes ma'am i hope you are not uh, taking much of your time so you know just Somebody a few questions is asking here yeah. in the chat box yes someone uh, is asking why is it that uh, bangalore does not have skyscrapers when uh, land can be conserved Okay, spectacular spires, skyscrapers, and all that. Okay, that's a really okay. a good question, actually. <laughs> I, I mean, actually, you know why I tell you? 
Bangalore was meant to have individual houses. Mm -hmm. Our mm -hmm. mind was like that before. Okay. You ask a Bangalorean, do you own a house? They'll say, yes. Do you own a flat? They say, no. Our original Bangalorean, he would prefer a house. Okay. We are still bent on that because we have a salubrious uh, climate. Mm -hmm. uh, climate of Bangalore is actually so pleasant. Okay. Mm -hmm. To have a nice little garden and a nice little house is the psychology what we have. Okay. But now with the intense you know, software companies coming in and all that, okay? That is one of the reasons we have gone into multi-dwelling units like the apartments. Otherwise, I'm telling you, and the garden city, it's called a garden city, remember? It's a garden city. And the way we have grown in Bangalore is in concentric circles, not oh. like uh, uh, Mumbai or uh, any sea coast where the linear. growth is linear, yeah. but Bangalore grows like this. Yes. So it makes more sense to have houses and scaled up towards the other side. As you go to the periphery, we can have tall buildings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it works like that. And uh, the uh, that that is uh, you know Bangalore Mysore culture of having houses basically. Okay? Great. And, uh, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, it. thanks for that clarification. I hope uh, Pi is uh, pragyuman only. I believe. So the next question was from Andrila, ma'am, and she's asking what are the challenges that architects face. So maybe you can, you know, throw some light on that. The challenges uh, of architect. All three are ladies. We have most challenges. We cannot <laughs> blast, go up, blast. I was, I was holding myself from this question, actually. <laughs> so because I had this thing in my mind that, you know, being uh, mothers and, uh, you know, uh, in, especially in a society like India, where, uh, you know, lots of families are still very conservative towards uh, working women and all those, uh, you know, but now things are changing anyway. So what Andrila is primarily asking is not, from that perspective, but professional challenges, maybe, you know, you, 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 you people are facing or typically, or, you know, you, uh, another general architect faces. Yeah. Let's take it from Aruna, madam, Tulika, madam, and then I take it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Always. I feel knowledge is power. Okay. You know, when you are soundly, you are equipped with uh, knowledge, you put your foot so, down, especially when you go to when you go to site, you are one decision on the spot. Decision will have a chain reaction of uh, other repercussions, which you can visualize and give it emphatically I there. It doesn't depend on gender. I mean, yeah. I'm not very, uh, I mean, I have not, uh, gender-wise, no challenges. But if you are half-baked, if you are not studied well, the drawings before you go to the site, your own detailed drawings you have to be you know uh, very soundly knowing all the things to give an instruction there your line is so powerful when you draw a line on your drawing it will be implemented there so mm -hmm. everything needs to be done responsibly i think so this line i will be borrowing from you ma'am so your the line you draw is going to be implemented somewhere else so guys this is a great learning and deep it's really deep and you know every line you draw you have to draw it responsibly. So that's really, really great statement. Thanks for that, ma'am. So coming to Tulika, ma'am, now. Yeah. Uh, there are many responsibilities which you have towards your colleagues, the person, the people you are leading. Mm -hmm. You have to be a role icon to them. Mm -hmm. You have to understand them as well as make the project move forward. You have to sometimes make decisions which might not be comfortable. Mm -hmm. But yes, you have to think a lot. You have to be analytical. At the same time, you have to uh, not necessarily gender-wise think that you are somewhere less or uh, incapable. But yes, knowledge is definitely the the most important which you should have as an architect in which you can surpass and beat all okay thanks thanks ma'am thanks and now finally to Gita ma'am <laughs> yeah to yeah. sum it all about madam Aruna said and madam Tulika said I would say knowledge is where we need to stand okay when I said I wanted to lead the show that's what I meant okay once you are in some office learn enough and be confident over there because you are guiding your people. Remember, if you guide them wrong, they go wrong. And then who's going to play? Uh, you know, pay the brunt of it. It is the client. Okay, money is lost. You are shouldering some money. Okay, the responsibility of money there. It is not a hypothetical problem. It is a real issue. Second, Madam Tulika, what she was telling is the management per se gender does not have a problem. But what happens in a lady's? Um, you know, uh, there is something called. Uh, and when it comes to architecture, it is a glamour-based course. <laughs> yes, it is glamour. As much as it is, it is very 
challenging. You mm-hmm. cannot fool yourself at sight. Mm-hmm. Okay, then they'll term you different. Okay, fit for that. No way. It is as much associated. Your presentation skills are there, but then your head above speaks a lot, and it has to stand translate from paper to sight. And then you should do justice to the client, to the contractor, to the vendor. So you're balancing so many people. So every line, every inch of what you do matters. So you should be responsible in a very, very um, accountable manner. Yes. So thanks, ma'am. And uh, I really, we are, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, short our time limit. So students, those whose questions, I, you know, there are questions related to the post-grad level uh, uh, you know, options we have, we have discussed that, uh, Pranit. So uh, you can just revisit this, uh, this thing. What all options do you have in a postcard level for architecture? So with those uh, words, ma'am, we will now uh, wrap up the show. And yes, uh, anyone is say- saying something? Oh, okay. So now uh, we we uh, we are uh, towards the end of the show. So as you know, as parents, as professionals, and you know, someone who has been through all of this, seen the world. Our children look forward to you to, you know, get those few words of wisdom and or advice, which they can always take along with them. And, you know, any, any time during their journey throughout their life, mm-hmm. these things can add. So I would request each one of you to, you know, give some bit of, you know, some advices, piece of advices or, you know, your guidance to, you know, as a parting message to all of them, ma'am. So we can start with maybe Aruna, ma'am, first. Yeah, every project is a... Uh new learning be a learner throughout every project you know it's nothing you have done the 30 40 site it will not repeat so it's a different experience different challenges come with each project so throughout the journey you have to be a learner and go ahead great so learning never stops it, it is a continuous process so please make sure that even if you become a teacher you have to keep learning so that's what we believe and you know so you that thanks thanks for that those input ma'am yeah so ma'am tulika tulika ma'am can just uh, you know uh, sum up yeah i would like you to all you guys to know more if you want to go towards this journey of architecture know more read more collect as much as knowledge as possible before you step inside this industry, we step inside the college so that you are confident and very much focused on becoming an architect. Sometimes it happens that some students just go with the wave and just uh, want to fill up the forms, go to the NATA and in the during the course they realize no, they are not exactly, this is not what they want to do. So it is just a request that look towards what what is happening around you, what are what work people are doing. Do you want to get inside the same realm? Do you have those skills? Try to study yourself, then go towards it. Okay. So yes, and, and you know, so keep adding to your knowledge, guys, and you know you have to be perfect in your subject matter. That's what the message is from ma'am. And final words from uh, architect Gita, ma'am. I would like to say that uh, remember this is a passion driven field. You should like the field. Parents can only guide you if they can recognize, but then then there's no force in this. Okay, the minute you enter, you should enjoy. Okay, and in your at all through what matters is learning all the while and being sensitive as much as sensible. Okay, you'll have to be both to pursue architecture in the long run. Okay. So you'll have to be as much sensitive, as much as sensible, then the formula, the whole format falls into place. So, so being sensitive and sensible is what... Yes, is you'll have by your choice, it starts with the passion and end of the day, you'll have to deliver goods to yeah. the client. So it becomes a very practical aspect of it. So you'll have to balance all this and deliverance as much as passion and always address the client. And this is a very... I mean, you know, people oriented subject, you know, you will uh, learn a lot from so many people you come across. So that is a very good experience and you should enjoy it. Thank you. Great, great, great. So I think, you know, there are a few questions, guys, those who have still some questions related to the, you know, you can always address it to me. And uh, if I will be able to sort it out from my level, I will be able to do that. I will forward you the queries answers or else I will forward it to the veterans who are here. So with those words and, uh, you know, thanks again, uh, Aruna, ma'am. So it was really pleasure to have you on uh, this panel and lots of insights. 
so we you know we try to you know the experience and learning and knowledge you you people are having again the the intention or the objective of these centum connects is even 1% is transferred to our audience our children and uh, we can expect a very bright future for them so with those words i thank tulika ma'am for having spared some time mm -hmm. and uh, you know and thanks for to geeta ma'am because you actually you know were instrumental in uh, you know bringing uh, lots of people uh, of the field onto this panel that's a short notice i gave to madam aruna actually yeah yeah so i'm really yeah. thankful really thank that's the power of you know you know uh, so you know that's the passion i can see and sense from all of you and the interns who took time and came on 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 the on, on board so uh, uh, thanks a lot all of you all the students my a uh, message again will be let's keep learning let's keep extracting so you guys have the responsibility of extracting all the information from the previous generation our generation doesn't know that much we are still to be you know uh, what do you say we still to reach that level so your our immediate generation that is what we are talking to these people right now have lots and lots of knowledge so our intention is we'll keep on doing and you know conducting these sessions so that one our... second sir yeah ma'am i would like to thank you personally for this opportunity for having given us to do something so like contributors we have given some little thing to these young minds and we feel very honored having been uh, no no ma'am the pleasure is all mine Thank because you. i also learned a lot many things so as as aruna ma'am was saying learning should go on and i also learned so many things the idea is plain and simple all these audience people who are sitting right now in front of the computers guys our only objective is that let's learn from our previous generation they have lots of you know many a times we take them for granted you know and it's not, i'm not holier than thou i treat my parents and maybe my grand parents uh, you know according my my grand my father my grandfather was a doctor but i never paid a, only when i heard the other doctor speak the other day i was relating to whatever he was suggesting so what i'm just trying to tell you here is our previous generations do have a lot of knowledge be it parents don't take your parents for granted and you know uh, extract as much information from them as you can because your world is going to be more challenging and you know uh, full of all these uh, bigger challenges compared to what me our generation and our previous generation had so with those words i hope everybody uh, is is safe you stay secure at your home don't venture out come what may the times are really tough we have to sail through and these these uh, 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 events are only to you know distract you from such negative negativity from all of that another objective is that as well so we spend some good quality one and a half hours understanding different aspects of life because this is going to pass with those words thanks a lot aruna ma'am tulika ma'am and geeta ma'am and all the students and parents thank who thank you very much thank you very much thank you for thanks ma'am thanks for your time okay yeah